Welcome, Welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey friends, welcome to episode 30. I've got a very special guest for you in this one. If you've been using Divi for any amount of time, it's likely that this guy needs no introduction. Augustine Mack, or just Mack as most people call him. He is one of the prominent YouTubers and tutorial video guys for Elegant Themes. So if you've seen any Divi trainings or any of the official Elegant Themes videos, you've likely seen him. And then he's also a professional YouTuber and course creator as well. So he has a whole side endeavor called Funnels to Income, where he helps people build their web design businesses online. And he covers a variety topic of topics from Divi to web design and all kinds of other stuff. But as a fellow course creator, he ran into a problem recently. And it's the reason I wanted to have him on because he had a handful of his courses on a platform called Skillshare. And you'll find out through this talk that he recently logged into his account to check his stats and to check his income. And he realized that for the past three months, he made zero, nothing. And the reason being is because Skillshare straight up closed his courses without any sort of notification or anything. They just straight turned his courses off. And this leads us to the topic of this episode, which is why it's so important that you own your content. And the way you can do that is by using WordPress. So you're, we're gonna talk about this in detail, but in short, the reason you wanna use WordPress is because Wix, Squarespace, and course creation platforms like Skillshare and Udemy and all these, they own your content. So it could be turned off at any point. It's a very vulnerable uh, position to put yourself in. So that's what this episode is all about. You'll hear about Max experience with this. And then each one of us go into why this is so important for you, because it's not just about being a course creator. This happens with websites too. Again, when it comes to Wix and Squarespace and some of these do-it-yourself builders, they own your content. So what happens if they go down or what happens if they decide to close your account? You're screwed. You don't want to do that. You want to use WordPress and you're going to find out why in this episode. Before we dive in, this one is brought to you by my Divi WordPress beginners course. So if you're listening to this, maybe you're coming from Wix or from Squarespace. Happens all the time. I've got so many new students coming in from those platforms and I love helping you guys out. And that course will help you out from start to finish. It will guide you on the most important areas of WordPress and Divi so you can learn quick and then you can get going with building websites that you own fully. So enjoy this episode. Mac was awesome. Uh, he's just a true professional. I almost didn't like having him on because his video and audio quality was so good. It totally made me look like an amateur, but awesome having Mac on. You guys are going to love this conversation. Absolute gold through and through. So here is my great chat with none other than Augustine Mac. Mac. Welcome to the show, man. It is awesome to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so I've been looking forward to, we were just talking before we went live. I feel like I know you because I, I'm an Elegant Themes blog contributor and you're a blog and video contributor. So I feel like we should have done this at some point. I, I feel, I've been watching you for years now. So it's awesome to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and have you on the show, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like I know you as well because um, of your contributions to the uh, Elegant Themes uh, blog. So yeah, I mean, we should have done this a long time. So I blame you for that. <laughs> I will take full responsibility. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, there, I, I wanted to have you on for a variety of reasons. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some future episodes to talk about video and gear and stuff like that. But you just released a video recently with a very important lesson learned. And I'm sure we'll talk about this. But in short, all of your courses on Skillshare just disappeared. They were closed. So I'm really interested to hear about that. And the topic we're going to get into is the importance of owning your own content and hosting your own stuff. So really excited to see what you've learned and what you would recommend people do about that. Uh, before we get into that, though, for the folks who are maybe new to Divi and new in my audience and who may not know you yet, I imagine most of them do because they've watched a lot of tutorials on elegant themes and stuff. But for the for the three people who don't know you yet, Mac, why don't you tell us who you are, where you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, my full name is Augustine Makachemu. So I know it's quite difficult to pronounce my last name. So I just use Mac, you know, just that's, just that's, keep it that's much appreciated for us simple <laughs> Ohio boys. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
I'm an online entrepreneur and also um, I'm a content creator with Elegant Themes. So I have my own blog where I uh, create a lot of uh, video tutorials, mainly around DV and how to use DV. But I also branch into content creating and uh, creating an online business. And uh, the website is called Funnels to Income. And uh, the Elegant Themes blog is just a, uh, the Elegant Themes channel on YouTube. So that's mainly what I do. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll make sure we link all that in the show notes. And then are you in London, like the heart of London or where are you based at in the UK? No, no, no. I'm in uh, Birmingham. That's the second okay. largest, yeah, second largest city. Yeah. It's not as densely populated as London. So uh, it's, it's pretty quiet over here. Oh, awesome. I was thinking you were in London for some reason. Okay. Very okay. cool. Now you're in an office for those watching on video. Um, your video stuff always looks great. Like we were just talking about your camera before we went live. Uh, do you commute, like, do you have a little co-working office or what does that look like for you before we dive in? Oh, yes. Um, I actually live about 45 minutes away. So I drive all the way to the studio because I've tried working from home uh, a few years ago and that didn't work very well because the kids will be making noise because my, uh, my kids are homeschooled. So most of the time they'll be at home. So trying to record and trying to do work, I mean, it just didn't work. So I decided, you know what, let me just find my little studio and do all my work in there. And it's worked pretty well for me, to be honest. And you have a, f- a handful of kids, right? If I recall, I think I oh, heard yeah. your divination talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got five kids. <laughs> oh, wow. What are the ages? Uh, my oldest now is, I'm not very good with the ages and so I'm sure my wife's going <laughs> to into trouble now. But uh, my oldest is 17 and the youngest is about nine or 10. Okay. I think. Yeah. So it's uh, four boys and one girl. So yeah, I could see the past handful of years being very difficult working from home for sure then. Yeah, no, it's been very, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I was curious because your studio has always looked very legit. So I think I had heard that before that you, you were in a, a studio. Um, when you worked at home, I'm, actually, I'm just curious, did you have your own home office and was that still really difficult or what did that look like? Um, we had a four bedroom house. So I used one of the, um, one of the bedrooms as a studio, but, uh, to be honest, it didn't work very well because, uh, I tried to use the shed as well as, um, as a studio and that wasn't very good either. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. gotcha. I know we're trying, I'm, I'm in my home office right now and I'm going to milk it here as long as I can, but I'm sure eventually <laughs> I'll be doing something similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it, man. So you have, you have your courses in a variety of places, it looks like, but mm-hmm. most importantly, you, you sounds like you kind of experimented with putting in it on Skillshare. And uh, why don't you tell us what happened? I'll link to that video, but I would like to know just kind of what happened here recently. Yeah, it's crazy. In fact, you know, um, with my courses, uh, I think I was one of the first guys to uh, create a course uh, on, uh, on Divi. And this is going back way back. Uh, I think it was um, Divi 2.4. So this was on Udemy. Hmm. So my courses were fine there. Everything was okay. And then they introduced this thing where they just changed the price on you and you can't do anything about it. So that was really annoying because I put so much effort in trying to promote that course. And then when they cut the price to about $10, it's like, I mean, what profit do you make from that? And you still have right. to pay them uh, a percentage as well from, uh, from all of that. So that was really annoying. So I said to myself, you know what? Let me try and host my, uh, my courses myself. So I started hosting uh, all my courses by myself on my, on my own website. So what happened is I had so many plugins going on. So <laughs> it was just all a mess. And um, I got frustrated and I thought to myself, you know what, let me, just use a, let me just choose one of these companies that host your courses for you. So I started off with um, Skillshare. So I put all my courses there. Everything was okay. And um, I think it was two weeks ago logged into my account and all the courses were canceled. It was, I could not believe it. It was very frustrating. I mean, it's not, I mean, I wasn't making a lot of money from it, but you can imagine, I mean, that covers like part of my rent here. It covers my hosting. So that in itself was very frightening. So I thought to myself, you know what, let me do a tutorial about this and, um, And let people know that it's very, very important that you keep your own content on your own domains or or your own uh, platforms. Because by doing that, then you own everything. You just have to worry about the marketing. And before the Skillshare thing happened as well, I um, I'd moved my courses to Teachable, and Mm. I went over there, 
there were a lot of limitations, um, limitations, but I mean, we can speak about uh, the teachable situation as well, because that sure. was another, <laughs> that was another thing that I uh, experienced as well. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Cause I have my courses through WordPress and Learn Dash, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Cause you mm-hmm. still have, did you move from Learn Dash to teachable? Or uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so yeah, let's hang on to that because I'd love to talk about that. I'm curious because one of my one of my new mentors, Pat Flynn, I took his podcasting course and it was through Teachable. But I could tell as a designer, it looked very limited. And and while yes, Learn Dash can be tricky, I love being able to customize anything I want, which is awesome. But yeah, like getting back to this, the Skillshare, your courses there. Uh, what was interesting in the video you put out, which I'll link below, is you show your numbers. It went from, I think, what was like 2,500 or something like that to nothing. And that's yes. the big thing. It's not like one course was closed. They Everything. shut down all your stuff, dude. That is insane for no reason. Like you didn't break any guidelines or anything. It just and, and from my understanding, Skillshare and a lot of these other self-hosted platforms, not even for just courses, but Wix and some of this other stuff, they are very hard to get a hold of. Oh, and absolutely. Looking, looking for customer support is a shit show for a lack of a better term. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I mean, you saw uh, the courses that I, um, that I, sh- um, that I showed on the, uh, on the video, it was WordPress DV. So I was just scratching my head thinking, what could I have done to get banned? And till today, I don't even have an answer. <laughs> so they never told you like, you know, no. this is why, or there was no notification that your courses were going down. Or? No, I saw something. Wow. Uh, this was going back um, about a month ago or two months ago, which said you had a, a content strike, but I tried to get in touch with them to ask them like, what's the strike for? And no one got back to me. So I thought, you know what? I'll just ignore it. You know, you know, it's nothing. And then when I logged back in now, uh, when I did that video, that's when I realized that all my courses were pretty much offline. I couldn't do anything to them. I can't repost them and I've lost pretty much everything on that. Wow. Now, what is a content strike? Is that something that Skillshare went through or? Okay. Yes. Um, Skillshare has their own uh, sort of like rules because um, after I saw my courses um, banned pretty much, I went to YouTube to... uh, to see if anyone had the same experience as me. And there's quite a few people have, that had a similar experience. And what they mentioned, one guy actually mentioned that um, one of the reasons is if you talk about making money online, you could get a content strike. Oh. Yes. But there could be other reasons. So in my case, this was just WordPress and this was just... Uh, yeah, because you didn't different. have like a make money online course or any... I mean, your brand is funnels to income, but even mm-hmm. that, that's not like... You know, that's not a shady sounding make money quick online kind of thing. No, not at all. Not at all. So the videos that got banned actually were me teaching people how to use WordPress. And uh, the other one was uh, Photoshop. And uh, I think it was DV. Yeah. Another DV course as well on there and how to create landing pages. So pretty much that was it. <laughs> so wow. everything is gone. So <laughs> now how that, long, how long had you had your courses there? Cause from my understanding, it sounded like you just kind of experimented with that, right? Just to see if it would be a good additional revenue for you, like additional source of income. Um, my Skillshare account was on for about, uh, I think about two years okay. and, uh, the courses were there for about a year. So I just, had the, I just put my courses on there and I just left them there for, uh, you know, uh, just to see what could happen. So yeah. And, and so, unfortunately, I mean, you checked it out. It looked like they were gone for a, a few months, right? Or two oh, yeah. or three months because you hadn't logged in, you know, which that's, I do that kind of thing all the time. Sometimes I don't log into my stuff, you know, depending on what it is for a while later. I'm like, oh crap, you know, <laughs> but that, I mean, and you said it in the video and this is a big point. This is something I want to make sure we hit on right away. If you have your entire income relied on a platform that you don't own, you put yourself in a very, very vulnerable position. Like if Skillshare was your main income, that it went down to zero. Absolutely. And uh, this is, uh, you know, a hard lesson. And uh, I've actually gone through the whole process. So it's good to let people know your audience as well that, um, I mean, this can be done using, you know, your own plugins like uh, Learn Dash or Lyft or LMS to set up everything on your own website. Because pretty much what these guys are doing, Skillshare and uh, Udemy, they're just hosting your videos for you. And you can do that absolutely by yourself. And mm-hmm. the key here, like you've mentioned as well, is if that's your own, if that's your only source of income, you're done. <laughs> you know, where, where is your, uh, your normal, 
day to day stuff that you pay for, where's the money going to come from if that was your only source of income? And trying to build it, it takes a very long time to get to the point where it starts making money. So it's not something that you can replicate right away. So this is why you need to get it right, right from the get go and get it all hosted on your own services, on your own website. Good point. Yeah. And then for folks who might be new to web design and new to WordPress, just as kind of an FYI, WordPress is what's called open source, which means you own it. When you do your own WordPress site, you own everything on there. Um, now, it is on WordPress, but the way WordPress works is you have a database that has all of your content, all of your pages, all of your post types. And the cool thing about that is like I have automatic backup set up through Managed mm-hmm. WP. So God forbid my site goes down or something. I have the entire site. I have everything and I'm never going to be locked out of it. I'm never going to be closed from the content. Like I could move my entire site to a whole different host, you know, something else and I could have all the content. Whereas if you rely on Skillshare or Udemy or one of these, like you experienced Mac, your content, I mean, did you still have access to the courses or was it like blocked or did it just, Um, it wasn't live? uh, I still have access to the website, to my account but I can't do anything to the courses. Absolutely wow. nothing. I mean, that's just brutal, man. And yeah, to your point, and you know, kind of a part two to this is Learn Dash, which is what I use. Mm-hmm. And there's Lifter LMS and a couple other good course platforms for, for, um, for WordPress. Yes, I build the course content through there. I do all the lessons and the videos and everything, but it's the same thing. Like when I back up my website, it backs up all of my Learn Dash posts as well. So Learn Dash is not going to shut off my account. Like it doesn't work like that. It's not like you to me and some of these other ones where they are literally hosting everything. And this is why it's so important to use WordPress, use some of these other tools where you own it. This is one of the benefits. This is actually something I tell my clients just as, you know, something for my audience. Um, a lot of my clients have said in the past, like, well, should I use Wix or Squarespace? And I tell them the same thing. I'm like, listen, those platforms, you don't own the anything. Like they could, for one, they could shut down. You could lose everything. Um, they could close your account at any time. You are relying on something that is not yours. Like you're Absolutely. basically, you know, you're, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable spot. So yeah, yeah, WordPress, you know, I mean, not everyone listening is a course creator, but the same principle applies to just your web design business. Oh, absolutely. I just wanted to add to uh, these platforms like Wix uh, and Squarespace. Now, let's say you had a um, business running on Squarespace or Wix and it gets very popular and you decide to, you know what, I'm going to move my site over and uh, get it hosted somewhere else. Basically, you can't take their platform with you because that, that's their intellectual property. So you live with nothing pretty much because they own the platform in the um, the service that helps you build a website. Whereas with WordPress, you design it however you want. And you can take that anywhere you want. You can host with uh, uh, Flywheel, you can host with WP Engine, HostGator, whatever it is. You can just move your site wherever you want. Whereas these other platforms, uh, once you put your content on there, I mean, all your SEO, everything, it just goes to their services. So you're not building your own, uh, your own platform, I mean, to say. So that's where the disadvantages are. And um, I think we need to make a lot of these uh, videos to just uh, let people know why it's important to host your own websites with WordPress. That's a great point, man. Yeah, I actually have on on my video list uh, why you should choose WordPress over Wix and Squarespace and some of these Mm -hmm. other ones. And it's exactly what you're talking about. Because I have had my business website, this is my third host. I first I had them on Bluehost. And Bluehost back in 2009 was awesome. They were like, they were great. And then they got sold uh, a while back and then they went downhill and they're still downhill. All my clients, I tried to get off of GoDaddy and off of Bluehost. Uh, And then I moved it to a different company called Arvix, which was kind of like a kind of, I don't know if you've heard of them before. It was a lower tier hosting company and they were awesome for a year. But then guess what happened? They got sold too. And then they went downhill. Support used to be amazing. Then it was non-existent. But I found SiteGround once they became popular. And they've been amazing for me ever since. And so I moved all my site and everything over there. Now, what you just said is exactly the most important point. I was able to move my website from host to host. And it didn't affect my SEO. All my pages were there. All my content was there because I used WordPress, which is open source. And we own it. Uh, Yeah. 
If you have a, a Squarespace website and they go downhill or you're upset with their service or you feel like they're nickel and diming you for every little add-on and you want to go to Wix, good luck. You're going to have to literally <laughs> copy and paste all of your content and download all your images and recreate an entire site with a whole different platform. So yes, uh, I think yes. people are finding that it's just so interesting because their marketing is such a ploy. It's like, you know, build your own website in 10 minutes and do it for 10 bucks or whatever. And then people realize pretty quickly how costly it actually is in the oh, long yes. run. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So man, huge, such, such important point. So with Skillshare, were you able to like, where is it at right now? Have you, I mean, I imagine, have you sent in some sort of complaint? Like, have they got back with you? Are they going to refund you anything or what does that look like? Um, to be honest, um, I sort of gave up on it because I've sent a few emails. I haven't got anything back from, uh, from them. So wow. there's, I mean, those courses, there's, I don't think they're, they're going to, uh, enable them and, uh, run them as normal. Maybe after, after listening to this podcast, they could, uh, <laughs> get I don't think my show's me. that popular yet, but, uh, <laughs> I think you would have a better chance of them seeing your video online. Uh, but yeah, and what's interesting is in the beginning, you talked about you to me about mm -hmm. selling your course for like 10 bucks. And when I started doing courses, I still get this all the time. I can't tell you how many people said, are you going to do your courses on Udemy? So, you know, they're not as expensive. And I'm like, no, for a number of reasons. The biggest reason is what we're talking about. I yeah. know, like I, I've been in the business long enough to know that I'm not going to trust them to host all my content, and my courses. Uh, because of this type of situation. What if they just close it down for some reason? Or what if they decided, what if they went through hardships and closed a bunch of their courses down? Number two is what you talked about. They tend to drop their courses down to 10 bucks. And I am not going to put, you know, my information in my courses, like 95% of my content is free with all my mm -hmm. tutorials and my videos and stuff. But my course content is at a whole nother level. And I am not going to devalue that and let somebody you know, bring it down to 10 bucks when it's worth hundreds. Well, it's actually, I think it's worth thousands, but I keep my pricing down to help web designers. Like that's the other reason is I don't trust that. And it sounds like you experience that as well, even with Udemy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> with Udemy, you can imagine, you know, creating these courses, you know, it may seem like it's very straightforward. You just go on camera and you just record, but there's a lot of planning that goes behind the scenes. I mean, on average, it can take you three to four months just to create one course, a detailed course. And as you mentioned, imagine all that work that's going in there just to sell it for 10 bucks. I mean, it's, it's not worth it. And you don't have a say in that. And this is something that affected a lot of course creators because at first you could name your price and everything was okay. And this was changed overnight. And so you can imagine what can you do as a course creator? You just now, I mean, all your profits have really gone down just like that and you yeah. can't do anything about it. So yeah, it, it is tough to use these uh, to use these platforms where you don't own your own content. Yeah. Now, so with WordPress and Learn Dash, we're both familiar with that, and it's still what I use. I've really enjoyed it. As you mentioned in the video that you put out a couple of weeks ago, it it is a little trickier to build courses through that. Depending on what theme you use, there's more work involved. But as long as you get it set up or you have somebody build it, it's I mean, it's worth the investment to have somebody build it correctly. You're good. Like you're you're set up and you can have full control. So I'm curious, um, let's talk about the whole teachable thing. What made you, did, did you decide you wanted to try that out instead of Learn Dash, or what did that look like? Um, what I normally do, in fact, um, the reason why I set up Funnels to Income is to, um, because I've been listening to a lot of uh, uh, gurus online. And to be honest, I've been very frustrated because uh, sometimes they make it seem so simple, like, oh, just mm. do this and just put this there and you're going to make money. And I haven't been very successful, to be honest. So I said, you know what? I'm going to stop listening to what all these guys are suggesting. Because even right now, if you go online and um, try to look for information on how to sell courses, there's a ton of ways you can, I mean, you can set up uh, your system. So I, I said to myself, you know what? I am going to try out all these different ways of doing things and experience everything myself. And then I'll be in a better position to actually talk about it. So that's the plan with uh, my uh, website, Funnels to Income. Okay. So I can, so even like now I can speak about, about Skillshare because 
I've gone through it because it's very frustrating. There's so much information out there. So with Skillshare, I mean, to be honest, when I first started, I was like, yeah, this seems like a very nice platform. I can use this to, uh, to earn my income. But uh, it wasn't like a matter of me choosing that over LearnDash because yeah. LearnDash has always been uh, really, really good for me. But the only issue that I had was my marketing was very weak. I mean, even right now, it's something that I'm trying to improve on to get, you know, to market my courses and get a lot of people coming to my website. So I thought to myself, you know what, let me use all these established platforms. Maybe that could make me a lot more money. But even then, I, uh, going through that process, I still noticed that I still have to promote my uh, courses on Skillshare myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was the, the other point? thing too. That's a, yeah, that's a great <laughs> point. Yeah, because I look, I was tempted, but the same thing. I was very tempted. I was like, well, like you know, I'm selling my courses generally anywhere between fifty and well, my business course is five hundred. So the average course I do is about two fifty to three hundred. That's like an average cost course. So mm-hmm. I have a hu- I have a big profit margin. Now it's time, like you said, it's very time intensive to create a course that's actually good. Uh, but the profit margin is there. Whereas, yeah, you have to market it yourself. That's the downfall. <laughs> but I had thought about that. I was very tempted with Udemy. I was like, well, if I did, if I put one of my courses on there, even though I make less, it could be in front of hundreds of thousands of people potentially. But I'm so glad I resisted the temptation because I'm closing <laughs> in on 500 students, which isn't a lot in the long run. But now this has become basically my full time. My courses are my full time thing, which is amazing in less than two years. So um, I, I would much prefer less students and have quality students than the people who are searching for something free or for five bucks. And again, it goes back to the ownership thing. Like I own every piece of content that I have on my WordPress site through LearnDash with courses. So uh, yeah, there's a big temptation for that, but. Uh, what I like that you're doing, Mac, is it seems like you're kind of putting yourself in the guinea pig role where <laughs> you're giving all these things a go, which is very valuable. Like we're able to have this talk because you experienced this. Um, and luckily you have other income streams and it's not, yeah. you know, killed you. I imagine if that was your only income stream, we wouldn't be doing this talk right now because you'd be scrambling. Oh, uh, tell so, me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're doing, I know you're making, you're probably doing pretty well with YouTube money. Uh, you're working for elegant themes with their stuff. And so you've got all these different streams and affiliate yeah, marketing that's as well. Yeah. I'm also What's doing that? affiliate, affiliate marketing. Oh, so affiliate market. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that, that's doing well as well. Now there's something I also want to mention, um, uh, with the, um, uh, with the Skillshare and Udemy. Now you mentioned a very good point where you said you'd rather have less students and provide, you know, quality support. Now, when you put your course, and this is what a lot of people don't realize, when you put your course on Udemy, uh, it may get a ton of um, signups, right? But the problem is you're going to do a lot of support and you know how frustrating it is. You're going to be doing support for um, for only 10 bucks and people want the full support. You know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah, I didn't even want, think about that. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's the challenge yeah. you're going to have. So you're going to- yeah, go on. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. What about like, um, you know, when somebody becomes a student on Udemy, do you have access to put their email into your own CRM or that's the other component? Like what can you do with that customer's information or does Udemy own that? That's the problem now. That's another problem as well. Now, when someone signs up for your course on Udemy or even on Skillshare, you don't have their details. You don't have their emails. You just have a chat uh, system on their platform where if they ask questions, you have to respond to them. And pretty much that's all you have. So you don't have a way to communicate with those students outside these platforms. And you know, in marketing, uh, having your own mailing list is very, very, very important. In fact, I talk about it as well. It's the most important thing. Email, (laughs) like, so it's funny because email has become, it's kind of circled back around to where people are realizing like, holy crap, Email having an email list is the most important thing. Like that's oh, my highest yeah. converter. I send a campaign out for my courses. Email is seventy five percent of my income. Oh, Over absolutely. Facebook ads absolutely. and anything else. No doubt. So th- that's another massive disadvantage of using these uh, these self hosting platforms. So you could get two hundred thousand, or you could get two thousand students in your course, but your email list is still at zero for that course. <laughs> like that is. Wow. I really didn't even think about that. That's, that's another reason Udemy and these other ones. Wow. Like, yeah, like 
my mail, I use MailChimp and every time somebody buys a course, they get automatically uploaded into MailChimp and I can tag them. I can either tag them or I can send out segment emails. So, and that's big for updates on courses too. Like I'm, I'm about ready to update a bunch of my courses here after my next, as my SEO course comes out and I can just send segment emails out. So I can just tell Mail, MailChimp, anyone who purchased my DB beginners course, email them this. So yeah, that's a huge I mean, aspect. I could tell you something else that I do with my mailing list as well is because um, <clears throat> I have a membership website on funnels to income as well. So anyone that has bought my Divi course, they also have access to my live training. So I do like Q and A's on Saturdays or even sometimes during the week. So I can send an email out to the existing students and say, Hey, you know, uh, you fancy a Q and A, if you have any issues, you know, join the, uh, join the live session. And that has worked really well. Now, with these platforms, you can't even do that. So basically, <laughs> you, you just have your course there and you just have to pray they don't change their terms or something goes wrong. Wow. <laughs> Gosh, it's so, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's huge. That's a massive, massive part about this. You got to build that email list. And what I found too is a lot, like a high percentage of my students are recurring. So they, they like one course, they come back and now I have a bundle option. A lot of my students are now doing my bundle option and I always give them a discount if they've already bought a course or two. So that's been huge. And if I were to host my courses on Udemy, that would be non-existent. Like I wouldn't have Absolutely. that option. The Absolutely. lifetime value of a customer is $10 on Udemy and it's <laughs> potentially thousands for me, you know, when you host your own stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So yeah, the teachable thing. Um, can you just talk about that real quick? What did that look like? Like, did you decide to go from learn dash to teachable? And yeah, what's your experience? I see you smirking. So uh, what's the experience? <laughs> what's the experience been so far? Now that was a crazy one as well. So what happened is I, um, uh, I created a course on, um, on, uh, learn dash. And so on my own website, so what happened is I was trying to get funnels working and I was trying to get WP Fusion to tag everyone that's buying. So there were a lot of plugins that were working together. So <clears throat> I didn't set it up correctly, to be honest. And that was a fault on my side. So one day I just woke up and people were complaining. Someone had just bought a course and they don't have access. So I had to go in manually and try and fix things. Yeah. So I was getting frustrated. And to be honest, I was getting tired. You know, I was really getting tired of this. So I said, you yeah, know what? Yeah, that's a dangerous position to be in yeah. too, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'm done with, uh, with the WordPress, Learn Dash, and all of that. I'm going to go to Teachable. Because to be fair, they do a very good job marketing uh, Teachable. So mm -hmm. went over to Teachable, moved everything, moved everything over there, you know, did my domain pointing and everything. And after about two days, I realized like, wow. The design of the landing page is so limited. I couldn't even do much on it, you know, and the, the builder, I mean, being used to using Divi myself, it was so, it was useless. Let me put it that way. It, yeah. I mean, I couldn't even do anything on it. And to make matters worse, if I wanted to upsell my course, I couldn't. And oh this, yeah. Cause you, you were using cart flows, right? For, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And the landing page, the sales page was so basic. I mean, I, it, it was so frustrating. And to be honest, within a day, <laughs> I had to do another video to say, hey, guys, and no, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> back to learn, Dash. That's funny. Yeah, man. I mean, it's oh, isn't that funny? Like, you know, inevitably, you just go back to what you can control at any point. <laughs> and to be honest, I sent an email out to, um, to all my students. So I said, look, I'm really having problems with this system and uh, I want to better support everyone here. So mm. I'm going to try Learn Dash. And they were like, okay, Mac go over there. Let's see what happens. And when I came back, I was so like nervous because I felt like well, some of them had already subscribed onto Teachable. Do you see what I mean? So I felt yeah. like, wow, I'm just bouncing them between two platforms. So I did a video and I just said to the, I mean, to all the students, like, guys, look, I really want to provide a good service for you, but I'm trying to find a way to really make things work. So it looks like I really have to sit down. So I need some time. I need about three, four days where I shut down the website, build everything and make sure everything is working okay. And mm. uh, to be honest, I got a lot of support from that. And everyone was saying, look, Mac, we, we don't want you frustrated because we loved your content. So go ahead, shut it down for four days, fix everything up. Once everything is running, then, you know, open it up again. And uh, right great. now I'm glad to say, 
yeah, I'm back on the WordPress platform, WordPress platform and I'm hosting my own, uh, my own courses. <laughs> awesome. What great lessons learned. And you know, that's the kind of vow, like that's the trust that you gain with students when you host it yourself. And I'm sure you don't have that with the Skillshare students because no. they, they paid for a course and they can't access it and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like at least, <laughs> at least you have full control to be able to engage with your audience and let them know. I, yeah, that's valuable. So mm -hmm. valuable. I know i just like with anything custom it comes with its ups and downs and learn dash has been great for me. The one issue that I had ongoing was I had so many people asking about payment options because some of my courses are three, four, 500 bucks. And I decided to do that. So I use WooCommerce. I have all my courses linked it with WooCommerce and there is no way to do a subscription without using uh, Woo subscriptions. Yeah. So I, we implemented that. And there was a lot of, I had one of my subcontractors, shout out Noel, uh, we had a, we had a quite a bit of integration to do and it worked pretty well, but I kept on having the issue you just talked about, which was students would like randomly be kicked out of the course they were yeah. subscribed in because they use a subscription. Um, and then it was very confusing because it said subscription in the invoice and I had to keep on telling people, you know, it's, it says subscription, but you get lifetime access and stuff like that. <laughs> and it got to the point where recently I was like, you know what? I'm done with subscriptions. I, I turned it off. I made sure all students that had subscriptions were made, made sure they had full access, lifetime access to the courses. And I figure, you know what? It'd be nice to do payment plans, but right now it's just not worth it. And is it's funny, all the people that asked about payment plans, like a lot of them either didn't go for it or uh, there were a handful, like I think I've had 12 or 13 people do a payment plan and then their credit card was expired after the first payment. Mm -hmm. And then I never got that second payment. So I had to boot them out of the course because I never got paid in full. So uh, that seemed to be an issue too. A lot of the people that were wanting things and payment plans or cheaper uh, became the most difficult <laughs> kind of people to work yeah. with. Just like <laughs> clients, like sometimes the people who want it for cheap are the worst people to work with. Oh, absolutely. And to be, I mean, to be honest, I mean, what you've done for the community, I mean, the way you've uh, done your free tutorials and all of that, People that are serious um, in, I mean, to want to learn how to design websites, I'm pretty sure they would, you know, put that money to the side and just pay for it because they know you, you mean, you're doing a lot to promote yourself, even with this podcast. So people know who you are and there's no like question of, um, am I going to get a good course or whatever it is, because they've seen your, your tutorials and everything. So um, just like myself, I've just cut out the subscriptions because I was, a, I had a headache with that as well. So it's just, a, you know, one price and that's it. You know, yeah, and it that seems to be, yeah, it's a great way to go. It really is, yeah, and and it's not that like if I had a two thousand dollar course because some of these mastery courses are thousands of dollars. Yes. That's a lot. Like that's a lot for me, and and we're we're you know on the upswing here with our businesses. Like that's still a lot, um, but yeah, it's like my most expensive course is five hundred bucks. Which <laughs> you know, if you can't invest five hundred bucks to build a six figure web design business, there's a problem there. Uh, absolutely. You're, you're not ready. You're not ready to have a six figure business. No, absolutely. I mean, some of these um, courses, even the plugins, I mean, I get this all the time. Oh, cut flows is so expensive. It's $300. Mm. I mean, it's $300 a year. I mean, if you wanted to start any other business out there, I'm surely you'll be spending way more than that. So I believe that people that are serious about uh, wanting to learn and start their own business, going through your courses is, you know, super valuable because you, you do the stuff for a living and you just teaching them what you've learned over the years. So that's an investment. And um, that's why, in my opinion, you know, the prices are reasonable because from what you get from that, from, uh, from that course, you can do a lot more down the line. So it is an investment Absolutely. and it, it should be taken, you know, just like any other business. Yeah, and it's really all about quality over quantity. I, yes. I would much rather have five hundred awesome students than five thousand that are, <laughs> you know, going to complain about spending ten dollars for all my my value and my content, and then have nonstop support, like you said. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, now your your membership. What are you using for the membership portion of what you do? Right. So for the membership, I use a plugin called uh, WP Fusion. Hmm. So it's a tag based uh, system. So when they sign up for the membership, it's through WooCommerce as well. Uh, they get tagged in uh, ConvertKit and that gives them access to whatever course it is that, I mean, whatever um, subscription that they like sign up to. Yeah. Gotcha. So currently I just have like one subscription. So that is, no, it's okay. It's not, uh, it's not too bad. 
But um, I I think the courses, um, you know, way much better because with the subscription, I'm giving access to everything and it's quite confusing for everyone as well. And uh, it doesn't make sense because if you add together like all the courses I have on my site, I mean, it gets to about, let's say, uh, maybe a grand, right? Mm -hmm. For the courses. And my membership is only $19 and you access everything. So there's a conflict there. Like, why would I pay $500 for a course and uh, I'll just pay $19, get all the access that I need and I'm done, (laughs) you know? Right. So I'm reconsidering the membership. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, I'm right in the middle, like I'm in the beginning stages of planning out my membership. And Mm -hmm. my biggest question was the same thing. I've gone back and forth, like, should I have just done like a membership where it's 39 bucks a month or something and just keep on dumping my courses in there. But that point is, is absolutely correct. It's like the problem with doing a full course and a membership is a course is really a standalone thing. Like all, like my courses, my business course, for example, Point A, point B, here is how to start, build, grow, and launch your web design business. Like that, that content and a membership would be really hard because each lesson, and I'm sure you experience this as a course mm-hmm. creator, when you create a course, it's kind of like you're you're building a staircase. Like there's one step here that gets you started, then there's the next step, then there's the next one, and there's like a clear end, you know, there's like light at the end of the tunnel, that kind of thing. Yes. And with a membership, membership is more ongoing. And what I'm looking at doing and what I'm in the beginning stages of is my membership is going to be more community forum and coaching based. And then I will do live trainings as well. And what I'm looking at doing is the membership is going to have more things for like email marketing, Facebook ads, advertising, marketing, stuff like that that's outside of the realm of my courses. Now, I could do a (laughs) course on email marketing, but... um, I feel like email marketing, for example, is probably something that could lend itself to like a little series in the membership as opposed to a full course. Because my courses are just like yours. They're Divi specific or like my upcoming SEO course is like a point A to point B, you know, guide for SEO. So yeah, I I just say that to say I'm with you. Like I'm I'm glad that I'm going to keep my courses separate because I've got, I've had so many people say, hey, would you open up all your courses for like a monthly charge? But the problem with that too is I don't want somebody to devalue it and spend 19 bucks and then grab all the content and then disappear and spend 20 bucks on something that's worth a thousand, you know? And that's what I've noticed as well on my, on my uh, membership. So someone would sign, <clears throat> sign up for the course, go for my main uh, web design formula because that course as well teaches you pretty much the point A to point B of designing a professional looking website. So I cover things like color theory, photography, typography. So everything that's involved in making a professional website. So you can imagine someone will just pay $19, uh, sign up for one month, go through everything and it's bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the problem. And I've noticed that people are canceling, uh, canceling the, um, the membership, but I've, so this is something that I'm definitely going to change and uh, restructure all these uh, courses they're just going to be like paid courses. And then I can just support everyone in there by doing like live Q and A's and then just yeah. keep it that way. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You just reaffirmed what I was thinking about. Cause literally I was on a walk yesterday and I was thinking about all this and that <laughs> usually my walks are my thinking time. And I'm like, you know, how do I want to structure this? And I feel better than ever now about having the membership be its <laughs> own forum, mastermind, good community with quality people, yes. and then advanced trainings. They're not courses, but they're trainings for certain yes. things. And I'm thinking about bringing experts like yourself to talk about certain topics, whether it's professional, like I could have you on and we could talk about professional video and audio gear and stuff like that, you know? Stuff yeah, like I'm, that. I'm, so I'm, I'm happy really to do that. Yeah. I'll, awesome, I'm, I'm, man. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited about it. That's the plan. Probably summertime, I'm going to be launching that, so... Hopefully the whole coronavirus stuff uh, gets over done, you know, at least back to normal in the next couple of months so we can get to that. So yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, man, that's great. Well, Mac, this has been awesome, man. What a great talk. Super, super valuable. I mean, it's all about owning your own content. That's and and again, most people listening aren't going to be a course creator yet. I think a lot of people have the ability to be course creators, but as as you found out as well. Uh, course creation is no joke. It is a lot of work. If it's going to be good, if it's going to be good, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of planning. 
there is the marketing and the, uh, I mean, really that's half of it. That's maybe more than half of it is marketing the courses. I'd be happy to share with you what I've learned too. Maybe we could do a separate talk on that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, because I've learned I've learned a lot over the past two years. But now that my courses are into the six figures, it's like it's pretty cool, man. I'm excited. I'm kind of getting out of my web design business and and full time into <laughs> courses and and YouTube and stuff. So it's it's pretty exciting times. But um, it really goes back to like this stuff of like, well, what platform should I use? And we're in the same boat. Like a lot of people getting started, you know, they're like, what platform should I use? How should I structure this? We're in the same boat, even as <laughs> authorities because there's all these different options and it's very tempting to try different things out and we want to be diverse. Um, but at the end of the day, this talk has made me realize owning your con owning your own content is priceless. Oh, it's priceless. Absolutely. And I'd, I'd also like to say something. Um, I watched a few of your, um, podcast uh, episodes and to be honest, I'm inspired. <laughs> I'm really inspired. So, I was actually thinking of setting up my own podcast, you know, and uh, perhaps maybe even have you on there because there's a lot that, you know, because you see when my, with my tutorials, mainly I'm just talk, I'm just saying, well, click here, do this, do that, click here, do that, do that. But I feel like people don't really know who I am, you know? Mm. So having a podcast and listening to your podcast is, is very inspiring. And I was thinking, you know what, maybe I could have a podcast where I can talk about even you know, more of my experiences and things that I'm doing or even experiment, like put myself forward to say, look, I'm going to spend $500 here on, on marketing and let's see what it does. And then it's like, I use myself as the example. So yeah, those are like my I, ideas to the podcast. <laughs> dude, I couldn't encourage you to do it enough. It's awesome. I mean, it, it's one of those things where it can be very time consuming. I, I really, you know, I, I spent a lot of time the first couple of months getting it going and creating my graphics and my flow and my system. But now I've got it down to the point where after this talk, <clears throat> I actually plan on editing this today because I want this to release uh, this coming. We're recording this on Thursday. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want this to go out on Monday because it's such a timely talk. Um, I should be able to get it done and edited today and then wrap it up tomorrow. Like it really only takes me a couple hours now with my templates in place to do the video and the audio. So with your video skills, you could do, well, you could keep it just audio. It would take a lot less work to do it just audio. Um, but video is powerful too. You know, what's interesting is because a lot of people say, don't put your podcast on YouTube. And I agree with that. If you're just doing audio, you don't want to do an audio podcast on YouTube, but yeah. If you make it a video show, my YouTube numbers are almost just as much as my downloads on, on the <laughs> podcast downloads. So like a lot of web designers, I've done that before. When Divi Nation was at its heyday, I, yeah. all the time I would watch a video and just have it on the side while I'm building, building oh, a website. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love like looking at people. I love looking at what the guest looks like or, you know, you just get a better feel for their mannerisms and stuff. So yeah, yeah. man, I, I couldn't encourage you to do it enough. I think it would be awesome. And I'll tell you one thing about podcasting. I encourage everyone, if you've got something to say or you want to bring a community together, do a podcast because we talked about this before we went live. It just builds trust. And that yes. is not found in any other medium. It's not found in a blog post. To your point, the tutorial, the tutorials I found are a great entry point. Like they may find, oh, there's, you know, here's a tutorial on making a LearnDash site. Okay, this guy, Mac, oh, he seems pretty cool. Seems like he knows what he's doing. But unless, even if they click one of your links and you get a kickback, a lot of times that's it. But if they go to your site and they're like, oh, he's got a podcast. And they say, oh, he's got some really good topics here. Then yeah. they listen to you for an hour, not just a 10 minute video. That's where it really becomes powerful. And it's interesting. Um, I've had a lot of people, I've kind of kept track of people who reach out who get into my courses. And this is the typical pathway. They find me on YouTube for a quick tutorial. Then yeah. they realize that I have a ton of tutorials. And then like, oh, cool. Then they realize they have a podcast. Then they start listening to the podcast. And then they're interested in a course. And <laughs> then it's multiple course sales. And now it's like, once I get my membership going, then it'll be on. Because that's the other thing too. Like the the idea here is for us not, like not we don't want to just do a quick like we don't want to get a quick sale and run. We want to help people. And it's really hard to do that when somebody just disappears after they purchase something. The one reason I'm really excited about a membership is I want to like keep track of my students. I want to make sure there, there's more like, and that's the problem with courses too, is a lot of times somebody will take a course and then they might just disappear. 
But yeah. I want to like circle back around and help them. And that's where I think the membership portion comes in. So, oh, absolutely. absolutely. That's kind of my, that's a little peek into my game plan here moving forward. <laughs> and yeah, the podcast, man. And there's a lot of personal growth into it too. And, and to be honest, like it saves me like this talk right now, I don't have to try out Skillshare because I can talk to you and find out what, <laughs> what went wrong, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, um, it's great. I mean, it's, it's really inspiring when I saw you, were, um, uh, doing these interviews and your podcast I was like, wow, this is, this is really cool because, uh, like you say, creating courses, I mean, it's a matter of, uh, it's similar to how we create our YouTube videos. That can be, you know, you can learn that. That's not very difficult. It's the marketing. And having a podcast and um, doing, you know, and like an online show or stuff like that, that's part of the marketing. And people need to know, trust, and, um, and pretty much have a rapport with you in order for them to buy from you. Because you can't just pop up there and say, look, uh, I have a TV course and people will buy. Well, they have to have, I mean, they have to know you in, uh, or like and trust you. And the, only, yeah. and the best way you can do that is either, you know, video or having a, uh, like a show or even uh, like a podcast in this case, because you can get to talk about even deeper stuff about, you know, yourself. People get to know you, you know, your, yes. your ups and downs and your, you know, your troubles, that's a, you know, exactly. That's a great point. Yeah. I feel no like, and trust are the big three for any business. If you want to have success, your clients have to know, like, and trust you. And yeah, I found with tutorials, they might like you and they might trust you, but they don't get to know you. Like you can't, it's really hard to do a 10 minute tutorial and talk about something deep in your life that's impacted you. But you can do that on a podcast because a lot of people are just listening to you when they're driving. They're cool to sit with you for an hour if, if you have a really good talk. So yeah, that's been the other thing is I can talk about a lot of these personal type of things that I've gone through as a web designer. And then family, like I'm very open about my family life and work-life balance. And um, I don't know if you know, but a couple of years ago, my daughter, when she was born, we spent two months in the NICU. Um, so we had 56 days in the NICU. And I talk about how I tried to keep my business going through that time. Like those are the kind of things that I can't put into a tutorial, but a podcast <laughs> lends itself perfectly to that. I would encourage you too, man, aside from the um, interviews is to do solo episodes too. Cause uh, you know, like some of your videos are like that. They could almost be a podcast, which I'm actually repurposing some of my content as podcast episodes. Um, so yeah, you're man, you could, you could, you could have an incredible show. Now you do have a, now, when I search web design in, in uh, my podcast app, I see you. I see your face. It's the Funnels to Income podcast. Hey. But it's it looked like it's a uh, audio. Like, uh, let me look right now. So if I go to you, if I go to iTunes, and maybe you can do this too after, or if you want. If you That's type in web, if you type in web design in oh, uh, Apple so, Podcasts. Sorry, Josh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Before mm-hmm. before you continue, how is your daughter, by the way? Because you know what I saw was just you posting on uh, on Facebook. How is she now? Thank you, man. Yeah, she she's good. Um, she has, um, in short, a developmental, like a chromosomal, uh, it's called a micro chromosome deletion, which just means that her development is behind on some areas. Um, and what we're finding, she's just, she's just petite. She's really small. And she's about six months to a year behind on like speech and walking and stuff. Um, but she's doing great apart from that. And she did have a cleft lip and a cleft palate. So we've gone through three surgeries over the past two years. So it's been wild. It's been a wild journey, but she is awesome. She's amazing. Um, so yeah, we're still kind of in that journey and we're, we're not sure exactly what it is going to look like moving forward as far as the developmental stuff. But I mean, she's, she's just incredible. And then I have a four month old now too. Uh, so it's wild oh, here, wow. man. It's all, it's all <laughs> kinds of wild. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. But it's, I'm glad to hear that she's okay. You know, um, that's 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 great news. So thanks, man. Yeah, and you know what? And I've talked about this numerous times on the podcast. But that's what inspired me to start my maintenance plan. And re- yeah. well, it's my maintenance plan course. I had my maintenance plan going, and then going through the NIC, you really inspired me to like boost my maintenance plan for that recurring income. Mm-hmm. And then I built my maintenance plan up to cover our bills. And that's when I was like, all right, I've got to make a course out of this because it's, it's too valuable. To, and that's the other thing with course creation. Like what value, you know, you learn so much in a handful of years doing web design. Why not give back your experience? And this is the other thing I'll say with course stuff. You and I have very similar courses. I have similar courses to like David and Tim over at uh, WP Gears. 
The thing is though, we all have different experiences. So you could take the same Divi business course, but the the different instructor, you'll have a whole different experience because oh, yes. you get to hear from their their perspective. Yes. That's the other big thing. And also, I mean, even though the uh, the uh, the courses may seem similar, people would pro- I mean, will buy from Josh or will buy from Mac because it's Mac. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So that's that's why the marketing is also very very important. So even me with the way I look at my courses, I don't look at it like uh, I'm in competition with you because I mean, there's a ton of people out there that want to learn. So it's about choosing which instructor they, I mean, teach them, you know, the best they, they want. Maybe I'm too all over the place and too loud. So they want someone who's a bit calm. Maybe they want Josh. So <laughs> <laughs> No, so you're I- right though. It's like, yeah, like yeah. And it's co-opetition. And that's where, that's where being an affiliate is big too. Like I'm an affiliate yes. for David and Tim's business course. And that, that was great for me. And same thing for you. Like if you have courses that I don't cover those topics. And absolutely, I know, like, and trust Mac. So I'm going to trust to send my students there and vice versa. Like yeah. if I have some courses that your student that you don't offer, then you can join my affiliate program and then send them over to me. And then it's a win, win, oh, yeah. win all around. I mean, definitely. I mean, we can work something out and, uh, you know, help each other out in, uh, I mean, that, uh, that way that, that'll be yeah. awesome. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, man. Yeah. But I, Hey, I appreciate you asking about, uh, Bria, my first daughter. I, yeah. She's, she's awesome, man. It's definitely been a journey, but She's incredible. Just makes it all worth it. Um, oh, great. And I act, and I meant to mention. So yeah, if you search web design, and at least I when I search it into my Apple Podcast app, uh, your face comes up first, and it's WordPress User TV. So wow, I don't know if you, um, I don't. Yeah, you somehow you must have. Uh, set something up to where, because it is interesting, even when I look at the episodes, it shows like a little TV icon. So (laughs) I don't know if it was something with your YouTube channel, but yeah, you absolutely, if you, if you type in web design, you come up with red background, your face, and it says WordPress user TV. That's very interesting because I set up a podcast, not like a podcast, 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 like what we're doing right now, Mm -hmm. but I set up a, uh, a channel. This is going back like what, seven years, eight years now. Mm -hmm. So what I was doing was I was just posting my YouTube videos on there. You see what I mean? So I guess this that's is what's showing be up. It. Yeah, it's that's gotta, definitely it. It's got to be it. Let's see. There's uh, well, there were some from 2019. Divi Summer Sale, free WordPress mastery course. These were in July. Mm-hmm. How to build your own online course. Divi WooCommerce Design. Looks like those were all posted in July. So yeah, I guess somehow that was fed into the podcast. That's, yeah. that's weird. So I'm ranking yeah. for web design. Dude, you're number one. Yeah, you should check it out. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably because you've been so consistent. I mean, it looks like there's a hundred episodes that have popped up and they date back to 2015. Yeah, there you go. Um, so 2015 is when I set it all up. So I was okay. just adding all my YouTube videos onto the podcast uh, thing in uh, in Libsyn. So that's all I was doing. It's not, it was, it's not really like a podcast podcast. So if you go to oh, one of those episodes, yep. it's just a copy of my video on YouTube. That's all it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I just clicked <laughs> one and then you just popped up and it just brought like it popped open a, um, let's see. Yeah. It just pops open my iTunes player as a video. So there you go. See? Yeah. So you were posting those and through lips and it must've just, yeah, you, you, you technically have a podcast going. It's just not a uh, audio. It's a video podcast. Wow. That's super interesting. So I'm definitely going to go with this idea now. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, I'm really excited for you, man. Yeah, do, do the podcast. Um, uh, I took Pat Flynn's podcasting course, which was invaluable. I can give you a, there's a cheat sheet too, a free download cheat sheet. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send you to really worthwhile. It's because it's just like anything with a website design. It's good to think through it. And um, the other part to the podcast is like you can overthink it. Like I overthought yeah. my title, my artwork, everything. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm going with it going with a Josh Hall web design show. <laughs> I was at war with myself, whether it should be Divi specific or should I have like, I just didn't know. I was like, nope, I'm just going to, cause you can always change it. You can always change a title or change something. So. Uh, you know, I've changed so many names. I had WordPress user TV. I had Divi university. Then I That's had right. Mac, yeah, then I university. Had Mac I university. And then now I'm just like, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm just going to call this funnels to income because that way it's broad. I can grow with it. I can, I can talk about different topics in there mm. and also talk about my journey in uh, trying to be successful online and uh, try to be, um, 
financially independent because right now I'm still on that journey. I'm not, I'm not on the uh, six figures yet. So, <laughs> so I would like to teach, you know, what I'm learning through the journey and uh, share that with the, you know, the audience. Absolutely. It's so valuable. And they, like I said, they just get to know you. Like, you know, you see you on YouTube, but how did anyone, does it, how many people know you have five kids? Like that's, that's crazy. That's, (laughs) you know, like that. And I think that breeds the, uh, the trust in it too. Once somebody gets to know you and know your experience, it's like, okay, this is, this person's legit. Uh, Cause there's a lot of scammers out there. Um, And yeah, yeah, it's huge. I'm excited for you, man. That's awesome. Cool. Well, man, Mac, this has been a great talk. Hey, I know, uh, I know your time is super valuable and I know you actually have a limited time in your studio, right? You get booted yes. out at some point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, what time is it now? Uh, so yeah. I have about 45 minutes, but I still have to uh, do a bit of work, catch up with my emails and stuff like that. So. Gotcha. Well, Hey man, I'll, <laughs> I'll let you go here. Thanks for your time. Hey, do you have like a final thought for anyone in, in this top? Any, I guess anything we've gone over, but particularly anything with like owning your content, any, any final thought you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. Um, what I'd like to say is uh, when it comes to creating content, I mean, content right now is very, very valuable. So making sure you have your content on your own platforms is key. I mean, even uh, when it comes to websites, funnels, your courses, it's best to have it on your on your platform. So just to give you a few examples, like let's say, for example, um, when it comes to hosting your website, there's Wix. I know we spoke about this, Wix, Squarespace, and so on. Now, the alternative to that is obviously WordPress and even the Divi. If you buy Divi and use that, I mean, you you have the license and you can use it on as many websites as you want. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a, there's a, there's a learning curve, but it's priceless. You know, once you learn how to do it, there's a ton of tutorials out there. Once you learn how to do it yourself, you're good. When it comes to courses, you've created the course, I mean, the videos anyways. So why put them on a separate platform, which is going to own your content? So again, it's just a bit of a learning curve. Set it up with LearnDash or Lifter LMS and have it on your own website. Now, the advantages to that as well is if you have your courses and your blog on the same website, you can promote your content to your courses through your blog. So if you had these separate, you can see you're putting, you know, you're giving traffic to these platforms that you don't own. And if something yes. goes wrong, like we mentioned, they have the, the popularity from your SEO and all your hard work for promoting those courses going to a different website. So you'd rather have it on your own website and this can help your website rank as well. So that's, the, that's one thing. The other thing as well with courses is um, having um, upsells and downsells also helps you make more money with your courses. And some of these platforms do not even offer that. And uh, your prices can be, you know, uh, reduced and you can be banned on these platforms. And once that happens, pretty much you're done. So this is why I, um, I highly recommend that anyone out there that wants to build courses or even want to build their own websites, try and look for solutions where you can host your own, uh, your own content and your own uh, uh, websites. That way you own everything. So the only thing that you need to worry about is your hosting and that can be done very, very easily. Yeah. So that's, uh, those are my, uh, <laughs> my last thoughts on that. That's great, man. That's gold. Yeah. I was going to put some input into that, but you just said what I was going to say. So yeah, that's awesome. man. <laughs> well, Mac, thanks for your time. This has been a great chat, man. Definitely keep me posted on your podcast. And then if you want to have me on, I'd love to, man. I'll share everything I've learned with courses or whatever you want to chat about, man. Oh, fantastic. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, Mac. Talk soon, buddy. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Peace. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.